Okay, we are live now. Uh, this is a pre-recorded video of session 7. Okay, the last time we have discussed about the Earth's sphere and its interactions. What are the four major spheres? So these are the atmosphere, hydrosphere, geosphere, and the biosphere. Okay, so today we will be this we will be focusing on the geosphere. Now I'm going to picture I'm going to show you a picture. I imagine that you live in this place. There is no electricity. There is no modern technology that you can use. There is no modern technology that you can use. Your source of food is hunting and picking fruits and herbs that you think is edible. So how will you react to this environment? Will, will your life still be as easy as of now? Electricity and modern technology of any sort makes our life as easy makes our life easy like cooking with an electric rice cooker you won't be needing to pick up woods and to start a fire and to wait to wait for the fire to be alive to cook the rice so what can you observe in the picture? What can you observe in the picture? So here we can see the theory of evolution by Charles Darwin. Okay, what else? We can also see in the picture our technologies. So as humans evolve, technology is also evolving. As we can see in the picture, after the ape is a human holding an axe. And this axe is made up of what? It is made up of stone. This indicates that the first tool or first technology human used is stone or made up of stones. Now, from the axe, it evolved into a pickaxe and evolved again into a computer, then into a virtual high-tech gadgets such as the watch or the sunglasses that can read the temperature. Now, I want you to focus on the pickaxe. So what is the use of this tool? What is the use of pickaxe? It is used to break down rocks or a tool used for mining. So why do we have to break? So why do we have to break down rocks? What is inside the rocks that is so important? So, minerals. Minerals. We mine rocks, we destroy rocks to get minerals. So let us define first what is mineralogy. Mineralogy tackles the chemistry, atomic structure, physical properties, and genesis of minerals. So these are the top 10 minerals for modern world. <clears throat> okay, so number one is copper. So copper is the most vital due to its very use it's very wide usage. Next is platinum. Platinum. Platinum is a critical part in electrical electrical part critical part in electrical boards. Number three is iron, major components in its structure because it is the second most abundant 
of all metal. But although being the second abundant, it is the most used metal. So silver, important for manufacturing gold, regarded for its high value. Cobalt, so as, same as the platinum. So an alloy of uh, platinum and cobalt is used to produce strong permanent magnets. So cobalt is a growing demand for magnets. Seven is aluminum. So aluminum is the most abundant mineral. It is the most, most excuse me, it is the most abundant metal mineral used. Lithium. Lithium is widely used for efficient batteries. So all batteries are um, so, oh, oh, I mean, lithium, you can find it in all batteries, all types of batteries. You can find lithium in there. So, zinc is known for its vital, no, zinc is known for its resistance to corrosion and potash component of fertilizers. So, these are some examples of minerals that you can find in your home or in your gadgets in your own technologies first is the salt salt so salt is a so mineral it is a mineral or it is salt is a sodium chloride second is silicon so silicon is used in microelectronics, computers, and smartphones. Talc. So we can find talc in cosmetics. And talc is also the softest of all the minerals. Next is magnetite. A gray black magnetic mineral which consists of an oxide of iron and is an important form of iron ore. Some of the metal parts of our cars are made up of magnetite. Next is gold. Known, again, again gold is known for its high value and also used in use as jewelries. Next is fluoride. So fluoride, fluoride in toothpaste is a chemical made from the mineral fluoride. So it reduces the tooth decay. Next is sulfur. So head so the head of the match is a mixture of a potassium chlorate and a sulfur. Next is quartz. Next is copper. So copper is used in electricity because it is a good it is a good conductor of electricity. So what comes do you mind when you hear the word mineral? So these are the basic. So these are the things that will come into our mind when we hear the word mineral without knowing what mineral is. Vitamins and minerals. The mineral water itself. And the vitamins. The, so why are minerals important?
So why are minerals important? Minerals are important because it is one of the things that we can live. We can't live without, since minerals are everywhere, from our food, transportation, electricity, technology, and even in our body. We need minerals to keep our body healthy. Next is the, the formation of minerals. So the first is the magma crystallization. The many minerals start out in liquids that are hot, hot enough to melt rocks. Magma is melted rock inside the earth. <coughs> Excuse me. This magma is a melted rock inside earth, a molten mixture of sub substances that can be hotter than 1000 Celsius. Magma cools slowly inside earth, which gives mineral crystals time to glow large enough to be seen early, clearly. So iron solution precipitation. So this is an example of a iron precipitation. So many elements, many elements in seawaters are precipitated with ammonium and sodium phosphate. Many elements in seawater are precipitated with ammonium and sodium phosphate. Almost complete removal of calcium and magnesium eliminates scale, which seriously handicaps the water recovery process. So chemicals, sedimentary rocks formed by Precipitation of minerals from water precipitation is when precipitation precipitation is when dissolved materials come out of water. For example, take a glass of water and pour some salt halide into it. This is a common way of chemical sedimentary rocks to form and then rocks are commonly called evaporates. Evaporites. Next is the saturated solution. So cooling, cooling by liquids. The magma hits nearby underground water which reacts with the rocks around it to pick up dissolved particles. As the water flows through open spaces in the rock and cools, it deposits solid minerals. The mineral deposit that form when a mineral fills the cracks in the rocks are called veins. Next is 
these are the example of a created solution so this is a rock and inside the rocks are minerals so this is an example of veins this is what we call veins the the, the minerals that fill the cracks in rocks and next is metamorphism so it is the change of minerals and the change of core primary so the change of core is primarily due to heat pressure and the introduction of chemical active fluids the example of this is the diamond so due to intense intense heat and pressure it can cause carbon atoms to crystallize and thus forming a diamond the diamond formation process takes up billion years so next is the mineral definition so what so how can we define minerals so first it must be naturally occurring second it is inorganic third it must be crystalline and must have a definite chemical composition and it must be a homogeneous solid so naturally occurring uh, they are not man-made and occur naturally in nature example of this is a calcite pyrite and amethyst the steel is not a steel is not a mineral why because it is man-made although it is made up of minerals second it must be inorganic so they have never been alive it is not or nor have been alive meaning they are not alive and they can never come from a living organism if it is if it is from a living organism or a remain of a living organism such as fossils it is not a mineral next is crystalline so it looks like a rock candy as you can see in the example we have the magnetite the azurite the rutile and the sulfur so rock candy example of this is a, a max um the max the candy max that is an example of a rock candy so uh, mineral looks like a rock candy so this is the structure of halite on the left and the atomic structure of diamond so halite is composed of chloride and sodium ion while carb while diamond is only composed of carbon atoms next is it ha it must have a definite chemical composition so they can be expressed by a specific chemical formula for example is the dolomite so how do you read the the chemical expression how do you read the chemical composition and dolomite that is read as calcium magnesium carbonate another example is the hematite so the chemical formula for hematite is iron oxide the next is it it is solid so they are neither liquid nor gases so all minerals are solid okay so 
now we can define minerals now i can define minerals so these are the abbreviations so n stands for naturally occurring i stands for inorganic c stands for crystalline d stands for definite chemical composition and s starts for what it stands for solid solid mm. so these are the minerals these are some there are these are the some these are some of the minerals we have thousands more than thousands of minerals okay so let's have a so this is a checkpoint <laughs> okay so i'm going to show you a picture and let us determine if it is a mineral or not a mineral okay so first picture is charan so is this a mineral yes jade is a mineral jade jade So jade can refer to either of the two different silicates. So the, the, the mineral jade comes from the two different silicate, the nephrite and the jadeite. Jadeite. Okay, next is a seashell. So is seashell a mineral? So shells are made of calcium carbonate in the mineral form of a calcite or aragonite. So it is made up of minerals. But animals be build their shells by extracting the necessary ingredients dissolve calcium and bicarbonate from their environment so shells shells are not mineral due to it's from a living organism or it is made up of a living organism next is teeth teeth so if teeth so is our teeth mineral the teeth are naturally occurring it is solid uh, the teeth so our teeth are not mineral because because it is organic our teeth are organic construct, constructs built by our body so it is from a living organism so that's why it is not a mineral next is a snowflake is snowflake a mineral yes snowflake is a mineral why because it has the five definition of mineral it is naturally occurring it is inorganic it is crystalline has a definite chemical composition what is the composition of snowflake snowflake is made up of water so the chemical composition of water is each to also it has a definite com chemical composition and it is a solid it is a solid form of water
Next is pearl. Are pearls minerals or not? But they are not minerals. Why? Pearl, why? Pearls are deposits of calcium carbonate, aragonite calcite, or both, called nacre. Pearl nacre is not a mineral because it does not have a distinctive crystal structure and because it is formed by the action of a living organism. Therefore, it is not a mineral. Next is a fossil of a dinosaur. So is fossil is fossil is this is this fossil is it a mineral? So fossils were not included in the ordinary definition of mineral. Why? Because not all fossils with the same mineral composition are considered valuable. But this picture, it is a fossil of a dinosaur. So it is not a mineral because it is from a living thing or it is a remain of a living thing. Next is a pencil. So is the lead of a pencil a mineral? Yes, it is a mineral. It is a form of, form of carbon called graphite. So it is very soft with a low specific gravity. Next. Is this a mineral? This is an amber stone. So amber. It may look like a gemstone, but amber, trust me, it is not a mineral because it is a hardened resin from the fossilized remains of a specific ancient trees. So therefore, it is not a mineral because it is from a living organism. So this is the last one. So chalk is Chalk a mineral or not? So chalk is in between rock and mineral. Why? So chalk is a mono mineralic rock, meaning it is a rock with one mineral in it. The mineral present in rock and chalk are is calcite. So uh, that's all. Thank you. Bye.